what's the term? Is it a naturalist? Naturist? Is that the naked people? Naturalist? I don't know. She's fully clothed. She likes nature. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to talk to you about pretty, gorgeous, beautiful, attractive book covers and the books that lie behind them. So today as I was doing what has quickly become the highlight of my week, um, the trip to the supermarket, um, I realised how important I'm finding um, seeing the beauty in small things is in um, it's kind of casting a little bit of light in this dark tunnel that we all find ourselves in. Um, so I find the actual shopping part um, of that trip quite stressful, as I'm sure a lot of you will um, be feeling as well. You know, people not adhering to social distancing, feeling a bit anxious about what I'm touching and just generally being around people at the moment. Um, but my little reward to myself after I get through the shop is to drive the long way home, give my car a bit of a run, but also give myself a little um, time away from the house. So I open all the windows, I get a real blast of fresh air, I pump up the tunes and I drive along the waterfront just to take in some of the lovely scenery that we have um, where I live um, and just to kind of unstifle myself a little bit before I head home um, back to isolation with the children um, and seeing that scenery connecting with the outside um, just lifts my spirits. On our daily walk around um, our wee estate here I've noticed that the blossoms are all coming out and seeing that just um, fills my heart with the warm and fuzzies because um, it just it's nice to see something beautiful in all of this chaos. So with that in mind I had a wee route around in my bookshelves to find some of the most attractive book covers um, to bring a little bit of that beauty to booktube. So, the first book that I found um, was Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. Um, now this is quite a plain cover, um, but I absolutely love this wee guy down here. I love foxes, I think they are so full of character. Um, I actually have print of a fox in my living room um, who I'm totally in love with um, so yeah I love this cover just for this wee guy here I'll bring him a little bit closer so you can see just how cute yes um, but actually this book is really good as well so I think this is the first Kate Atkinson book I have read um, it certainly won't be the last. This is the story of Ursula who um, gets the chance to start her life over and over and over again until she gets it right I suppose. Um, and it pushed me out of my comfort zone a little bit because I'm not one to reread books and um, so having to read scenes um, over and over again was a little bit strange to me but once I got into the rhythm of the book I really enjoyed seeing the scenes played out um, with the changes I just thought it was a fascinating concept and um, I know that I would um, love the chance to redo my life from certain save points as well um, I really loved Kate Atkinson's writing, she's really vivid in her descriptions. Um, I read this book last year um, and 
the descriptions of the Blitz in London um, have really stayed with me. She really brings an atmosphere to life, like you can feel the grit in your eye um, as you're reading. And she's got a real talent for characters as well. Um, all of the characters in this book really have a lot of depth. Um, even the ones that are kind of bit parts don't feel like bit parts. Um, I really enjoyed that. So this is a book that well lives up to the beauty of its cover. Um, next up, and um, with the theme of Blossom, is Special. Get my manky isolation nails out of the way. Um, is Special by Bella Bathurst. Um, as I mentioned, I absolutely love Blossom. I'm lucky enough to live in um, a town that's quite known for its um, Blossom line streets um, in the spring and so I think that's probably what drew me to this book um, in the first place but also her moody girl in the tree is kind of a foreshadowing for um, what goes on in this book um, so this was published I think 2002 and I probably bought it not long after it came out in paperback and um, so it was sitting on my shelf for years and um, I only read it last year for the first time. I have quite a few books on my shelves like that, I don't know why, it's not a reflection of the book. This book was, um, I think it was long listed for what was the Orange Prize at the time which is now, I think it's the Women's Prize for Fiction, I'll write it on the screen um, if that's wrong. Um, but um, yeah, I think it, it well deserved that nomination because this is a really captivating book. It is, um, it's about a group of girls um, who are from a boarding school but for some reason or another have not gone home for the holidays and instead are taken to a sort of residential holiday camp sort of place. It's not a camp, it's one building, but yeah. Um, so they all know each other from school, but they're not necessarily all friends. Um, and there are some tensions. They get up to things that teenage girls want to do. There's, drink, drink. There's drinking. I haven't been. Um, I wish I had, but I haven't been drinking. Um, so there's drinking, there's smoking, I think there's drugs, there's sneak out, see boys, that sort of thing. Um, and I think what made this book so strong for me is it so captured that weird um, atmosphere that they can be around teenage girls, the vulnerabilities and insecurities, but also like the maliciousness and the backstabbing rivalries and girls competing to be friends with like kind of the coolest girl. Um, it's just, I was at school <laughs> with some of these girls, possibly some of the traits here were mine as well um, and it really struck a note with me and it kind of comes together in a really dark ending um, which I, I really like that sort of exploration, particularly of teenage girlhood. Um, I think it's fascinating and this book handles it really well, um, really another really strong book. Um, and my next pretty book is Our Endless Number of Days by Clara Fuller, which I will just... I absolutely love the colours on this cover. Um, I love this kind of silhouette. Is that woodcut paper cut? Um, I'm not entirely sure what the term for that is, but I really like that. There's something almost fairy tale about this cover to me and um, I really like the darker side of fairy tales and although this isn't a fairy tale, it's not a fairy tale retelling but I suppose there are some elements of that in the story. So um, Peggy, um, when the book begins, is an eight year old girl and her father is kind of a, a doomsday prepper, survivalist, um, I'm not sure what the proper term is. and. I'm, can't recall what the catalyst for it is but he takes Peggy away to some somewhere in Europe 
um, to a cabin in a forest and he tells her that something terrible has happened and that uh, the world has basically ended and they're the only people left. So she lives a strange existence with her father for a good few years. Um, one scene, well, or one element of it that um, really stayed with me was that um, he makes her a piano. I think he carves it into some wood or draws it onto some wood um, and she practices on it but it does, obviously doesn't make any noise and I don't I don't know why that just really stuck 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 with me um, but obviously as she grows up she starts to want different things she starts to question the story that her father has been telling her and um, it kind of all comes together in a really dark ending um, so I suppose trigger warning um, for child abuse. But beyond that, I thought this was a really captivating story. Um, definitely kept me turning the pages, and I really enjoyed um, Claire Fuller's writing. I will. Um, I know I've got at least one other title by her on my um, Goodreads TBR because I would really like to read more by her. My next book is a little bit different because it's quite. Um, it is, I don't know if you can read the title from there, uh, Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Suzanne, I think that's how you pronounce it. I know for definite it would have been the cover that drew me to this book because I think uh, it's just so um, enticing. I love the colours, I love how it immediately makes you ask questions. This is another book that has just sat on my bookshelf for a long, 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 long time. I think this one's maybe probably about 15 years and I only read it last year or the year before. Um, and all I knew about this one is that it's kind of considered a classic trash or pulp fiction story. Um, and I guess that's why I've never kind of been desperate to read it because I wasn't really it didn't really speak to me. I must have been interested in the first place to buy it. I don't just buy books for their covers. Um, and I'm glad that I did finally read this because I don't think that sort of categorisation of it um, really does this book any favours. It's so much better than that. Um, it's the story of a number of women who are trying to make their way in Hollywood um, between kind of 1940 and 1960. It's really, uh, it's full of all the kind of old Hollywood glamour, there's lots of drugs and backstabbing, but what really struck me about this book, particularly as I think I read it around the time all the Harvey Weinstein and other Me Too um, stories were coming out is that this is, this could be taking place today. It really delves into the character's um, desire for fame and acceptance um, and the want to be successful but also about the men who use them, um, strip them of who they are to get themselves wealthy and um, and really mistreat them in the process. So I thought it was fascinating. It's full of like dark observational humour, um, but it's unflinchingly honest as well. And although none of the characters are like particularly sympathetic, um, I don't think that really matters in this book. Um, and at times they all show little parts of their personality or decisions they make that you can connect with. Um, and you see how the kind of dream of being famous turns into a nightmare and turns them into bitter, nasty or drug addicted shadows of their former selves. Um, yeah, so I, I can see why this one is, is a bit of a classic. I'm really glad I read this one. Well worth the read um, and very much um, lives up to its cover. My next read is Back to Pretty 
because it is Ghost Written by David Mitchell and would you just look at that cover. I absolutely love the colour palette. I love these little autumn leaves on the front. Um, I just think that's really eye-catching and beautiful. Um, I This is the second David Mitchell book that I read. The first one was Black Swan Green, uh, which I think I probably like better, but this is still a really good book. So this is basically like short stories on um, performance enhancing drugs. So it's really it really is a collection of short stories, but they're all interlinked by either characters or locations. Um, to, and then they kind of come together into one story about, uh, I think he's from a cult, as a terrorist, no, a cult member I'm sure, and I think David Mitchell is really good at interesting structures, um, because I, Black Swan Green is, um, I think it's, each chapter is a different month of the main character's 13th year. Um, so, you know, I, I like uh, an interesting structure like that, but he's, he's style and substance. Like David Mitchell's writing is great. I thought all these stories were really, um, they were intricate, they were well thought out, um, they kept me reading. I think a particular favourite of mine was like the old woman on the Chinese mountain. Um, that's stayed with me since I read it. And also there's a story about a female physicist who has, I think she has like top secret information. She's gone home to her Irish island, or is it Welsh island, um, to try and escape from... CID, CIA, I don't know, these acronym, serious person, government, danger, blah. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, like the stories are diverse, um, but it's a really interesting collection of them. Funny, poignant, and um, just well worth a read. And I definitely want to read more of his work, so. Another book that matches its gorgeous cover. So next one. is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy and I um, absolutely love this. It was definitely the cover that drew me to this book to begin with. So this is actually my mum's book and I stole it because um, it had been sitting amongst her books for a long, long time. I think she must have bought it when it first came out in paperback. Um, and it caught my eye way back then, uh, purely because of the cover. I love this little pop of colour. Um, I just, I don't know, I just think it's really interesting. Um, I don't think I've seen a book that looked like this before. Basically not in my parents' collection. Um, but for one reason or another, I just wasn't even interested in reading the back to see what it was about. Um, I think I've never really shared my parents taste in books so I just assumed I wouldn't like this one either but a couple of years ago one of my friends had read it and was absolutely raving about it saying you know like you really need to read this this is the most beautiful book I've ever read and they were right <laughs> I stole my mom's copy and um fell in love so this is the story of twins um Esther and Rahel in India um and it kind of talks about past issues and just kind of family dynamics. Um, there's a lot of unhappy people in this family for one reason or another and um, the, the story is told through the eyes of the children um, which kind of points out how nonsensical a lot of the prejudices that the adults hold are but then those childhoods are shattered by a tragic incident which is foreshadowed at the beginning of the book, you know, the whole way through the book that something tragic is going to happen. Um, but it's so beautifully written that you can't 
you can't look away, you know you're going to get hurt, but you can't stop reading. Aaron Dusty Roy is just brilliant at softly, softly weaving this story around you until you're completely trapped and then your heart is broken, but you still love the book. Um, yeah, I think it's probably one of my favourites of all time and um, just perfection along with its cover. And the final book that um, I am going to share with you today to bring some beauty to your booktube is um, The Essex Serpent by Sarah Parry. And that is just a sumptuous cover. Um, again, those autumnal colours. Um, I just think it's absolutely stunning. And um, this is another one with I noticed the cover long before I was actually one like willing to read the book. I got it into my head um, that this has something to do with dragons or something, and I'm like not a fantasy, particularly not like dragons fantasy um, at all. So I had kind of almost written it off um, until I heard other people were talking about it and decided to have a proper look at the synopsis myself and realised that actually it's probably just up my street. So this is the story of, I think her name is Cora, yeah Cora Seaburn. Um, her husband dies and she takes her son and herself off to live in Essex. So they leave London and they go to live in Essex. Um, and this is thankfully not the Essex of um, bleached teeth and orange skin that we're now um, constantly bombarded with. This is Victorian England, Essex. Um, it's very rural um, and she hears the local myths of a serpent in the estuary that is killing people um, and being uh, what's the term? Is it a naturalist? Naturist? Is that the naked people? Naturalist? I don't know. She's fully clothed. She likes nature. And um, like into natural history. So Cora is very intrigued by this. And along her um, traipsing through the country, she meets a vicar whose name has escaped me. Um, a vicar and his wife and becomes friends with them. It becomes quite controversial, um, but I won't say any more than that because no, rule number one, I give no spoilers. I do not spoil. Um, but, um, yeah, so there's, she's um, very much on the side of kind of, I suppose, evolution. And obviously he's a vicar, so you know what side he's on. Um, and they have some really quite interesting conversations around that. Um, this book is quite slow, but um, especially given it's a Victorian historical novel, it's not stuffy. Um, I really enjoyed it. I suppose if there's such thing as like a slow burning page turner, then this would be it. Um, and obviously there's the mystery of the serpent woven through it all, like a snake. Um, and that kind of keeps it ticking over as well. Um, yeah, really beautiful book and another one that totally lives up to its gorgeous cover. So I hope you liked my book covers. Um, I'd be interested in what you think of them. My book covers, I didn't make them. Let's try that one again. So what did you think of those book covers? Do you like them? Are they not your thing? Let me know in the comments. Um, and just, yeah, let's have a chat about book covers in general. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'd love to be able to say hi if you've watched the video. If you've liked um, our wee chat, then please subscribe. I put up a new bookish video every Saturday um, and I'd love to have you in my gang. So um, until next time. residential, outdoor, 